Did you struggle? Are you really a leader? Are you a kind person? Do you have pizzazz, zest? Are you able to articulate your thought in the right way? Are you really driven towards something? Are you interesting? Are you maybe smarter than others who are similar to you? Have you performed better? Hi, my name is Yaron Dahan. I'm the expert MBA admissions coach here at Menlo. The topic that I'd like to talk about today is why Harvard and Stanford have only personal essays and a little bit about how to approach those essays. So for the past decade or so, Stanford has asked the same question, what matters to you most and why? And Harvard's, although it's changed in recent years, has been some version of, we know lots about you and your resume, tell us more. Harvard has about nine to 10,000 applicants every year for 900 spaces. Probably 100 of them are for people who are so amazing and so fantastic that they'll get in anyways. And it's really these other 800 spaces where there's maybe 3,000 candidates or so who are all equally good, meaning people who have great jobs and great career trajectories and great GPA and a great undergrad school and a great GMAT. And asking a personal essay allows Harvard and Stanford to really differentiate between these people. And that's essentially what they're doing. Does that mean that professional stories have no validity whatsoever or that your story should only be about your upbringing or your parents or your boyfriends and girlfriends or whatever it is in your personal life that you may talk about? Of course not. In fact, in one way or another, most Harvard and Stanford essays do in some way relate to your career because this is not just an open-ended essay. You're not Montaigne. You're not writing about personality for the sake of personality, it's still just a business school application, and that's its purpose. So I can guarantee you that if you have great professional stories, they will have some sort of effect. But the real question is not so much what to write about, because you should always essentially write about your best stories, but how to write about them. So for example, a professional story might be, I sold a billion pencils. Now, Harvard and Stanford don't care that you sold a billion pencils, or maybe they do, but they saw it on your resume anyways and they figured out what that means. Okay, that's good enough, or not good enough. But the real question is, how did you sell a billion pencils? And why do you sell pencils in the first place? And why those specific pencils? And how did you grow as a leader in selling those pencils? And how did you learn to sell pencils? And all of these kind of things which make a professional story very personal. Another question that comes up very often is, should the personal story in any way be related to your goals? And I think the fact that Stanford asks a goal-related quest question, and once uh, a few years ago it was part of the initial question, and Harvard also in their application form asked about the goals, that the answer is, in a certain sense, yes. Meaning the essay should not be about your goals, but if it's completely unrelated to your goals, you may not be giving the best possible story. Harvard and Stanford do have a tendency to like people who have life-consuming passions, very often which are career-oriented, because that's the reason why you're going to business school, once again. I can think of a recent admit from last year who got into Stanford, and one of the admissions officers had written on the physical application letter that they sent in, we love the passionate story you told about your entrepreneurial venture. And I believe them. So. The question is, what personal stories are the best to tell? And the answer is very simple, the strongest ones. Always, when you go into the application, if your strongest stories are not coming out in the application, then you've not done them justice. So the strongest stories, the most dramatic ones, the ones with the most struggle, the ones with the most meaning, these are the best stories. Stories with disasters, discovery of a self, leadership, things like that. Yet at the same time, we shouldn't be so naive if to be a little bit objective and cold-hearted about which stories are the best ones to tell, meaning they'll be the stories that have the most effect professionally and personally. It's just a question of being subtle about it. So for example, are you from a wealthy and powerful family or do you have a wealthy and powerful network? You don't wanna say, oh, I have, by the way, I have a wealthy and powerful network, but if it doesn't come out, then you've not done yourself justice. At the same time, if you have access to a network, to knowledge, to firms um, that other people may not have. You would want that to come out in your essay in one way or another. However, you need to be subtle about it. Uh, at the same time, have you outperformed everybody in your workplace or in your industry? You do want them to know about that, but that's not what the question asks. So you have to find a way to slide it in again in a very subtle manner. Um, so that's what it means 
to approach the essays um, from a personal bent is to think about what they mean and more specifically what they mean to you and how they've changed you and how they influence your current application. Many people say, well, I don't have that. I don't have that amazing story. I didn't sell a billion pencils. I sold only half a million or whatever it is. My stories are boring. I am boring. I'm not interesting. I don't have the background that other people have. Maybe, or maybe not. But the truth is, even if you think you don't or if you don't have those stories, there's not, if you don't have them, there's nothing you can do about them. But what you can do is make the stories that you do have the best that they can be. And there are very strategic and tactical ways to do that. So even if your stories are very, very standard, there are ways to make them shine. One, a brilliant idea. Two, a fantastic structure. And three, just fantastic writing. So for a brilliant idea, you may have a great quote or a great, a great story, a great perspective that nobody else has had, or you may be more thoughtful about it. For structure, I can give you an example of what I'm talking about. You know, you may have a series of pretty good stories and nothing that is, you know, flash amazing. But you can string them together. Let's say, say, uh, my grandfather had uh, a way of living and his way of living was the four G's. And you structure your story around these four G's and this allows you to tell your four greatest stories. And amazing writing, maybe I don't need to say it, but this is kind of classic from Hollywood. You know, make them laugh, make them cry. There are hundreds of uh, comic book uh, hero movies. But some are amazing and some are less amazing. Why? Because the lighting is good, because the acting is good, because the writing was good, because the shots were good. And that makes a great story. And it's the same thing. If you use language in the right way and you, you're able to tug on people's heartstrings and intellectually excite them, you'll tell the same story as somebody else, but it'll work better. And essentially that is our objective and your objective. We cannot change your past, we cannot invent stories that you don't have or change your job, but what we can do is take the elements in your profile that you do have and use those to tell the most effective and exciting story so that you get the best possible results.